Is it just me, or did that young Kittles look like Monkey D. Dragon? Oda, what are you up to? So before we go any further, I gotta say that for the people that were taking the Usopp hate to the extreme, saying, Oda, kill him off, he's ruining One Piece, he's the worst character in the history, while it was upsetting what he did last week and kind of how he's just been like running and screaming, it was not for all that to kill off Usopp. He's still, to this day, one of my favorite of the Straw Hats. He's one of my big three as far as the Straw Hats go, my personal favorites. And this chapter kind of just shut down all the BS, put every Usopp hater in their place. And I was just like, Oda, I, I respect that payoff. And to be honest with you, I was thinking about the whole thing with Soge King returning. I feel as though, I think at this particular point, while it would be epic as hell, I mean, who doesn't want to hear that thing? Soge King, ooh, it up there. But at the same time, I think that back in the day, Soge King to Usopp's character was kind of just him confronting himself with the fears that he has, and him basically trying to cope with his fears. And that was the way he did it back then, and also to, you know, hide the shame of what he had went through. But now I think to a certain an extent Soge King isn't necessary. I feel as though, especially with a chapter like this, it shows that Soge King isn't what he needs anymore. Soge King is already a part of Usopp. Yes, he's still gonna be sniveling around, and to a certain degree it was kind of like upsetting. It was like, you're blaming Frankie. That was the most thing that kind of hit me where I was just like, why are you blaming Frankie, bro? Like, that, that was what like was pulled the string last week, but with this week's chapter, it kind of just showed that even though Usopp is that coward, and it probably will always be with him, probably even 10 years from now, he will still have that within him, the braveness is there too, and I just loved and respected when the Tontadas cheering and kept on, they kept on, they were like, no, Usolan is our savior, he's the hero, and he was just like, fuck it, I, I can't take this anymore, I, I can't live with myself if I don't come up and step up, and I was just like, hell motherfucking yeah, thank you, Oda, for making, hopefully, this payoff even bigger than what I had hoped, because right now, he's set up, he's there shooting at Treble, but it's just like, yo, even if Usopp gets his ass kicked or whatever, at the very least, he confronted his fears, he didn't need Soge King, this persona, this facade, in order to confront himself, he did it himself, and I respect that, and also, at the end of the day, where the fuck would he pull out a Soge King mask from? Now, you can argue that maybe this chapter had a little bit too much of Usopp running in the Tontata screaming in the beginning, but it was a good setup to the ending payoff with Usopp confronting himself. And this chapter was divided into two halves, because the first half was dealing with Usopp, the Tontadas in trouble, and then the second half was getting the backstory of Kidos and pretty much who he was. And what the fuck is the uncanny resemblance to Monkey D. Dragon? Is it just that the character design is very similar, or could it be some sort of distant relative? I'm just thinking to myself, like, yo, who is this guy, and what is his relation, if any, to Monkey Monkey D. Dragon, because he looked very similar to him, especially the 15-year-old version. I was just like, yo, does Garp have, like, a bastard child out there? Maybe he was called Garp the Fist for another reason. And the chapter took a dark tone when it went to pretty much showing that Kidos was a serial killer, because basically out of retribution, out of revenge, he killed some people that killed his friends. And I felt as though definitely the tone went from, like, this brave and heroic triumph with Usopp to just this kind of sad and very just somber type of feel. And I was very intrigued because I thought that the whole rule of like throwing them in the prisons and saying, you know what, after a hundred battles, I'll let you loose was a rule implemented by Dolph Mingo. But we find out that that was pretty much King Rico. He understood what type of person Kidos was and he respected him for just kind of not necessarily, you know, of course being a murderer or a killer or anything like that, but just that he could see what type of person this guy was. So he set up that rule. You get 100 wins in this battle and, you know, we'll let you go. We'll let you free. And that's interesting because it's same time was that a rule that he let as parole in general or was that just a particular case with this one with Kidos and if so if that was a just particular case with this how would Dolph Mingo know so I'd imagine that that was a rule implemented by King Rico himself so arguably you could say maybe King Rico was a little bit too like eh, because at the end of the day sort of it feels as though that's a tyrant but then at the end of the day if you look by that fate zero logic which I know is totally off topic but a true king is a tyrant writer for the motherfucking win but I digress and whoever Kidos is 
because it was just like, holy shit, you know, he really was suffering through what he did. I, I definitely could see some regret. You could see some regret within the character. You could see that pretty much after he did what he did, he was kind of like, you know, I fucked up. And he was just tired of being looked at as a monster. And the irony of the ending of that chapter, the irony of saying, I want to be forgotten. And then ultimately what happens is kind of like, was that set in place? Was that fate set in place? It, it just makes you question even further what the fuck was that because it was just like, Yo, he was begging to be forgotten, and then he got forgotten, and it was just like, fuck, you don't know what you have till it's gone. And overall, I felt like with this chapter, it did some very interesting things. I would definitely say that while the stuff with Kidos was interesting, and I was just like, yo, does he have a connection to Monkey D. Dragon? Why does he look like him? What's up with just, you know, King Riku kind of being a little bit like, I don't know, 100 battles for your freedom? Uh, and, you know, just the resolve that this guy had that he went through with a 1,000 battles and he was just like, they're never going to stop. And I think that to a certain degree, uh, he was doing this Kidos to see, like, maybe, you know, if I just keep going, maybe they'll, the hatred that they have and the, the disgust that they have for me being a serial killer will turn into admiration. I think he was trying to prove himself with those battles, and after a thousand wins, he realized they're, they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop hating me. They're not going to stop looking at me as this monster. So that's why he had that breakdown at the, you know, at the graves, and he was just crying, and he was just like, I want to be forgotten, and it definitely gave me the feels right there. And just overall, between the brave shit with Usopp and the whole sad shit with Kidos, I felt as though this was a very good chapter, and it just stepped itself up because I was just like, yes, Usopp, you did what needed to be done, thank you. Although arguably a little bit too much of the Tontata screaming and Usopp running in this chapter. So as a whole, definitely some great progression, some great character development with Usopp. Took you a while, motherfucker, but you manned up once again and you showed that, yeah, for the people saying that Usopp needs to die, he's the worst character of all time, fuck him, he's running One Piece. You just got owned by Oda. Usopp might have that coward in him, but you know damn well the soul of Soge King is somewhere up in that dude. And overall, I give this chapter an 8 out of 10. I felt as though it did some good character development. It had a little bit of progression as far as Usopp standing up and striking treble. I don't know how much it will do. And also, it delve into this character, Kidos, and I'm just like, I want to know more about him. What is it about this character that it's just it's something very interesting about him? I doubt that he is Dragon, but maybe he could be his long lost brother. Maybe he could be a cousin. Maybe he's Monkey D. Kidos. Huge bummer in One Piece next week, and it's just like things is really going. You got Doflamingo is starting to figure out that Kingdom Owen is cosplaying as him. It's like, fuck, Oda. Uh, it's becoming a trend now at this point. Like, we get like two or three chapters, and we might end off on a huge cliffhanger, and then bada bing, bada boom, bada bang. We're going on break, motherfucker. I know they're trying to preserve Oda's health, but. Uh, come on, really? And overall, the only problems I would say with this chapter is that it took a little bit too much of Tontata screaming and Usopp running to get to the point, but nonetheless, it reached where it needed to go, and that I'm just so glad, and if anything, I felt as though going into the Soge King facade would have been backtracking for Usopp. He is far beyond that at this point. I think at the end of the, prior to the time skip, where Chopper did Chopper Mask, it just showed that at this point, that's already old news. It's time for a new, it's time to stand up and not need a mask or a facade to be who you ultimately are, and that's Usopp that he's going to be the one of the greatest known heroes of all time. Just imagine that Uso Land statue. Let me know what you guys think. First of all, the whole Usopp thing. Were you excited? Were you disappointed? Do you feel as though you wanted Soge King to show up? I feel as though that was a triumphant moment. I can't see it any other way other than being like, yeah, Usopp stepped up to the plate. He didn't need anything, and he did what he had to do, and I I'm respecting that. Regardless if he gets his ass kicked by trouble, at least he overcame his fear and threw that fucking stupid, it's Frankie's fault bullshit out the window. Though. Also, what do you think is the connection, if any, from Kidos to Monkey D. Dragon? Why does he look so similar to him? Is it just Oda Lazy on that character design, which I highly doubt. Oda Lazy? Nah, they don't work. Or is it something further? Maybe a long-lost cousin? Maybe he just looks very similar to him. And do you feel as though it took a little bit too long for Usopp to get to that point, all the running and screaming, tontadas and everything, or you feel as though it was needed and necessary? And just over with those of the chapter, and what do you think about Oda taking another break? It's like, every two to three chapters, dude is taking a break, and while, hey, at the very least, he's continuing going. Going. I mean, like, you know, there's other manga that take two or three years off. Nagashi, I'm looking at you, bro. Nonetheless, I would really like it if we got back to a consistent schedule where, you know, we're getting weekly chapters because this is, these breaks affect the anime very heavily and are the reasons why the anime is just going to such a slow state at this point. So hopefully, eventually, Oda, like, gets over these breaks because while, yeah, give the man some rest, come on, bro. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up for Usopp stepping up to the plate doing what needed to be done. And also thumbs up for Kidos because a thousand battles to try to get people off his balls and they still wouldn't stop. And I, I, I respect that, man. For that world, and as always, people, have an awesome day.